Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 4. This is another good episode, so I'm excited to share it with you. Let's get started. And if you would consider, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. 80% of people who watch these videos don't subscribe. All right, thank you. First, we get to look at the paintings that the artist did in order to be accepted into the program. And there's quite a variety here. Remember, these are self-portraits, so it's fun to see how they want to portray themselves or maybe some unique ideas they've come up with. There are also some faces that have appeared before. I uh, jokingly called this fella Doctor Who, <laughs> but, um, but he's been on the program before. Um, and you can see there's a variety of ages and clearly backgrounds. So, so you know, we're going to have some diversity here. This image is puzzling to me. Yeah, we're going to see it a lot more later, so we'll talk about it then. And this fellow's holding, oh, isn't that a little gem of a painting? You know, not everything has to be huge in order to have impact. That's just, that's just a gem. Uh, this one is uh, probably done on uh, recycled lumber. That seems to be one of the things that people um, on this program will do. And it, it makes sense, you know, you're resourcing from around you. This was a little hard to see, but it was really a charming little piece with lots of details. And here's our last one. And um, it doesn't look like him in this particular photo, but uh, maybe it was done years ago. Russell Tovey is the first one up. He is an actor, an English actor, very recognizable to me, probably to you too. Um, they put him in front of a black background, which one of the viewers informed me that the backgrounds are very carefully explained why they choose them. And since I watched the program with the sound off, I was not aware of that. So thank you for correcting me in my ignorance of that fact. Now, after four hours, there are three artists that are going to turn their easels around and Russell's going to get his first look at the paintings that have been done of him and he chooses one to take home. That has nothing to do with the final judging, but it's an honor. Here's the first one up. Sure looks a lot like him. Um, my, my first reaction is, this is a great painting. I, I This is a great painting. I, I wish the person had more knowledge, perhaps, of color or maybe choices of color. Just, I, I, me personally, I never use black in a painting. I will mix a black, black, but I always try to have my neutrals have at least some bend toward color. Um, and, and maybe she did that here, and I'm just not picking up on it. But, oh, from far away, yeah, that's, that's an exciting piece. Wow, she's a contender. Good for her. Uh, she was the one who had that sort of strange drawing, so I, I am surprised. I'm surprised that she entered a charcoal drawing when she's perfectly capable of doing this kind of work. Uh, here's the next one up. This is obviously a, a flatter painting done by someone who has less experience. You don't see a lot of integration of forms here. You tend to see isolated moments. Um, I'm not really sure what to think about it, but compared to the one we just saw, it's kind of underwhelming. But we'll put that aside and take a look at the third one. The third one, oh, we get to I, I do like to come in close to see if there are some, you know, more intricate color decisions that have been made, but, but not in this case. And remember, we do want to see a diversity of styles and whatnot, so I, I'm not opposed to this. I just like the first one better. Ooh, it reads much better from far away. Oh, it's the Doctor Who guy. Okay, so he's been on before, um, and he's back. So, yeah, all right, that might, that might hold up. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is something. Oh, look at this. Wow. Boy, that's beautifully done. This is done by the fellow who worked on the reclaimed wood when we saw um, when they were sharing the self-portraits. This is, this is a beautiful job. Wow. Um, I'm excited about this artist. This is, this is, um, all right, this is going to be very interesting. This is going to be a good competition on this episode. 
Close up, yeah. Look at the colors going on there. I see yellows in the face. I see oranges. I see blues. Look at the mustache. Look at the colors chosen just in that mustache. He's got the neutrals going, but he's also putting in pure pigment too. And, um, you know, personally, I love it when someone makes the ears uh, appear as if light is shining through them because that's often the case. Oh, it's again on another piece of reclaimed wood when you pull back. I don't know if that's going to be a factor for the commission. I'm sure the commission has criteria, and I, I can't imagine they would be okay with reclaimed wood, but who knows? So let's see which one Russell picked. Oh, he picked this one. Yeah, it's very conventional, and uh, it makes sense. All right, good for him. The next one up in terms of models is Doreen Mantle. Yeah, Doreen Mantle who is known for One Foot in the Grave, which I watched ages and ages and ages ago. I'm trying to place who she is, but I'll go back to the, I'll go back to the BBC and, and, and take a look. She does look familiar to me. Um, again, they picked the background, and I don't know the reasons, but now I understand there are very sound reasons for it. And um, I enjoy that she wore that particular shade of blue against the sort of pink background. That's... It's kind of lovely, just lovely as a photograph. So let's see what happens when the painters uh, turn their easels around. Oh, here we go. So here's the first one up, and um, that's a little strange. That's a uh, boy. That's that's. I'm a little speechless. I'm not sure what to make of this. You know, if I just think about design in general, there's there's some really good design elements going on here, and maybe this person is pushing the boundaries of what we've seen before you know, exaggerating certain features and and eliminating others. I'm not sure, but I'm sure there's a thoughtful process behind this because nobody enters this program just for laughs and giggles. It's a, it's a tough, tough competition to be a part of and to commit to. This one this is really, really a beautifully drawn piece. It seems to lose some form when you get into the body. I'm not sure what to think about that. But I love the placement of the chair. I like the space around her. Um, this is this is a good painting. I, I'm not sure it's powerful enough. For, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. When you pull back. Oh, wow. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's uh, There's something about it that, that is, has some traditional elements and is also very, very modern take. Here's the third one. And we see a lot of painters like this, and I like this kind of painting. So this could be a contender as well. Um, we'll have a better look when we pull back. I, I, there is a real softness in, in the decisions that people made, uh, at least two of them, in this particular um, part of the episode. Uh, the first one with all those sort of strange design elements was a little off the hook, but oh, pulling back, that's a good job. Yeah, that's a good job. Look at her face. I love it when you can see the model and the work. It's, you know, that's, that's just exciting stuff, especially with the artists nearby. It, it, it must be a kick. All right, the next one up is um, Asim Chandri. Oh, wait, first we have to see who she picks. Yeah, who did Doreen pick? Oh, she picked this one. Yeah, Doreen, I would have picked this one too, even though I liked the one which had the entire body in the black chair, but but I agree. All right, the next one up, as I said, is Asim Chandri. Oh, yeah, now I'm remembering. Um, I love all the color behind him, and I love his shirt, I mean his uh, sweater, which, I'm um, sorry, but reminds me of Cosby back in the... 1980s, or maybe that was the 90s, but anyway, um, there's something just really open, and 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 uh, uh, this is just something that I would be compelled to paint, just because of the the colors going on and the pattern and all of that. I like color and pattern texture. Um, so here we go. The artists have turned their easels around after four hours. We can get a first look, and this looks really promising. Look at that one far in the distance. It's holding up really, really well. So here it is. This is the one we just saw in the distance. Nice job. Really nice job. No overpainting being done here. Not a lot of color, color value swap outs, but nothing suffers because of that. There's a real intensity of color. I don't see any chalkiness going on. I, I think she mixed for value and, and placed her, her 
color mixes in the correct places and and so it's not pixelated but but she did the hard work nicely done you can see the pixelation more in the beard than you do but she would have done the same thing in the face in order to get the the roundness of those forms and a feeling of volume you know there's a real difference between a feeling of volume in a portrait and that feeling that the figure um is is like cut out of a magazine and pasted onto the canvas you get a feel for it with your eye. This is interesting. Um, it's not going to hold up as a contender for Portrait Artist of the Year because the commission is a painting. So, and and I'm sure there are constraints that this program has because because being a commission, uh, my guess is that they would have some parameters that that the winner has to follow. And I think uh, my guess is that yeah, that a, a pencil drawing isn't isn't going to get the job done. I don't know what the synergy is between the program and the peop and the organizations that commit um, commission the painting. Wow, it's really nice from far away. And his his entry drawing of himself was beautiful too. So he can draw the heck out of anything. Nicely done. And there's a nice value range there. Not the same value range you would get with paint, um, which. You know, I think you'd have to get out some charcoal or something to get those darker values. Now, strangely enough, as you watch my videos, you know how, you know, particular I can be about my biases, but I love this painting. I don't know why I love this painting, but for me, this, this painting is like a quiet poem. It's just, it gives me a sense of calm. It gives me a sense of um, being present. It somehow is reflective of the model. I don't know how. Um, it's a square. Personally, I love paintings that are done on a square. I paint on a square really frequently. I can't even explain it. I, I just love this painting. And it's a painting that's going to stick with me for a long time. I won't forget this image. Just, But I can't really put my finger on why it captured my heart. Sometimes art just captures your heart with all the feels. And I'm feeling all the feels. Oh, okay. A sim picked this one, and that makes sense. You know, it's the most uh, sort of modern com combination, combination with traditional, and um, it's a strong contender. So now the judging begins. If only three of these people will go on to the final judging today. So they're exhausted. I don't know how long the day is. We know that they paint for four hours, but I don't know that that's four hours continually. My guess is it's probably more like two and then a break and then two, but that's a long day. They had to travel and get there. All right, the first one up is this one. That makes sense. Uh, this one, um, I just think this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. I wonder, I, I wonder why they recycled wood, but... Um, but I'm sure he answered that question on the program. So that's a dis disadvantage that I made for myself in not watching the program with the sound on. But I do that because I don't want to be influenced by the judges. And also they drive me a little crazy because I so often disagree with them. And, you know, no one wants to be in a room with me when I'm maybe making sounds at the screen. Love this one too. So, so far for me, even Steven, I couldn't pick one of these over the other. Oh, I see. Okay, that one. Mm, yeah, I have a feeling. Suddenly I get a feeling. Although my feeling is always wrong. <laughs> but I think they're going to pick this one. I'm not sure why. And if you watch the program with the sound on, you'll, you will hear the reasons why. It's just usually the, the reasons don't make any sense to me. They've passed over the paintings that they say are the best painting of the lot. So... I, that's why I need to watch it with the sound off now because I love the program and I want to continue to love the program. So now we can see the painting on the left where the artist had all the time to do and that's how he got in onto the program. And then the painting on the right that he did in four hours today, it looks like he's perfectly capable of creating an image in, in those four hours. It's very similar to what he did when he had more time. Um, just making a stereotypical judgment here, just looking at him, I, I suspect he he might care deeply about um, maybe some environmental causes. I don't know. And maybe that's why the recycled wood. All right, on to the next. Oh, this was the one that had that gem when we saw the uh, self-portrait. That's so interesting. Oh, I would like to see more of this painter. I just I just think there's a real sameness at the same time a difference between those 
those two paintings, balancing the dark elements against his face on the self-portrait, and then being almost high-key painting on, on the right. It is really hard to do a really compelling high-key painting because you are limiting yourself in terms of what your value range is going to be. And so you better be accurate with that value range. Yeah, this is the one that I, I just don't like the entry. I don't like that charcoal drawing because my mind can't reconcile what's going on here. I mean, I know it's a nude, obviously, but then there are hands and feet and my my uh, I my eye is confused and doesn't know where to land. So I, I really don't know what to do with this. I was very surprised uh, that she did something so conventional for today. So here we get to the final judging. Three artists, only one will go on to participate in the semifinals. And really good contenders. I'm, I'm glad I'm not a judge. I think they should. I, I like them all. But let's see who the winner is. The winner is, dun 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 da Oh, this one, the more conventional one. Well, that makes sense. This was a good episode. You know, we had some really strong painters. We had a couple of outliers that were a little strange, but uh, but that's what the program's about, to demystify painting and to let give us a window into people's creative process. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and please try my YouTube channel if you would consider it. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.